We begin our show today by welcoming the new CAO of Welland, Steve Zorbas, thanks, and welcome to The Source from interim to the actual CAO, getting the title beside your name. I hear you're looking for a place in Welland. Yeah, good morning, Mike. Thanks for having me here. Yes, I'm excited and humbled to be the city's new CAO, and my wife and I currently live in Thorold, but we will be actively looking for accommodations in Welland. Were you commuting from Burlington for much of the seven years that you've been coming to Welland? For most of that time, Mike, I was commuting uh, daily to Welland from Welland, or from Burlington. And that must have been a difficult commute at times. It was enjoyable other than during those uh, winter storms. It was quite an experience, but uh, most of the time you come down with a routine and find a way to get to work. Last year, it was discussed whether or not you would be interested in the job. And back then, you said you weren't interested. What changed? When the position was posted, Mike, uh, I sat down and reflected on the development opportunity, uh, looking at the potential for the city, its challenges and opportunities. And there were just some significant projects that had not started or were, or were about to be undertaken. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to throw my name in the hat and to continue with the leadership for the city itself. And, I'm happy I put my name in because there's some work to be done to provide leadership to work with the mayor and council. You came to town seven years ago, and that, that was as a consultant, moved into the CFO role. When you look at the CFO role, how does that prepare you to be the CAO? Yes, Mike, the CFO role, the good news about that, it, it gives you a big corporate picture, whether it's dealing with a public works issue or a water and sewer issue, or a planning issue, you're there, you're at the table. So it prepares you for the corporate perspective, what's happened, say, so it gives you a, a good 360 degree overture of the challenges of the city seeing. So you get, you get well-rounded and well-positioned for all the issues the city faces. A chief financial officer should have a good handle on budget. What do you see being some of the things that might stress out the budget in Welland over the next few years? The growth that the city is going to be sitting certainly will present some challenges for the city. It's a matter of working with mayor and council and your corporate leadership team to ensure that you continue to focus on the priorities of the community and the services that are needed by, by the city. It's not just the operating budget, but we're also blessed that we oversee the water and sewer budgets for the city. So it, it gives the team the opportunity to sit down, look at their priorities and the challenges for the city and present uh, uh, solutions to the city council. You talk about growth and Welland is probably of the 12 municipalities in uh, the Niagara region, the one that is really growing the fastest. Last three years, there has been a record set in new residential home buildings. And also we're looking at a potential of one third of the population increasing or increase of one third of the population in the next 20 years from 54,000 to the mid 70 thousands. So that's going to be really exponential growth. How do you oversee that as a CAO? It's a challenge the city has to deal with. It's sitting down and looking at a plan, having a vision, working with mayor and council and ensuring that the needs of the city today and tomorrow, you prepare for it, whether it's a recreational activity, trying to improve the quality of life for existing residents or new residents, or uh, looking at the, the long-term planning requirements of the city and the infrastructure requirements that may be required for the city. So it's a matter of the entire team sitting down and preparing for that growth that's coming in a responsible fashion and working with council to put forward a financial plan that is sustainable, reasonable, and affordable for the city. Not just on the operating budget, but on the capital budget as well. At the same time, as, as leaders of the community, we like to work with the federal government, provincial governments, to look at any new intake programs to assist with infrastructure challenges that the city may be seeing today or tomorrow. You talk about infrastructure. A recent storm this month pointed out some deficiencies in some infrastructure in certain areas. How would you look at that problem in solving it in the future? Yes, Mike, there was a, a significant storm in Dane City. Um, that occurred um, about a, two weekends ago. We classified that as a one in 50 year event. So what we'll be doing is we will be presenting to council an update report on that event in terms of what transpired, but also to some proposed capital works that are underway to mitigate what occurred in the community as well as future capital works. But also we will be presenting to council some opportunities to capitalize on some recent intake programs that were 
identified by the federal government to accelerate some of the larger dollar projects. So we're excited about going forward to council and presenting that to council on August the 10th. As you look at all of this growth that you've been talking about, where will the jobs be and how do you work with economic development to bring some new jobs to the city? Great question. Big part of the community, economic development has been a major success factor for the city. As you know, uh, we own and we service our own industrial parks. Our most recent industrial park, we only have two lots remaining. Uh, our hopes are and expectations that, that those last two parcels should be sold out by the end of the year. Uh, those will bring new industrial jobs to the city. Uh, so in the last uh, five years, uh, we have added almost uh, two million square feet of new industrial space to the city, which brings good paying jobs to the city. Our plans are to continue to look for additional industrial space to service a new industrial park for the city. And then that's combined with, as you bring in new residents, you bring in new commercial opportunities for the service sector, whether it's the restaurant sector or whether it's servicing those new 9,000 homes coming to the city. So a combination of all that, plus Niagara College being in the city creates great economic prosperity today and tomorrow for the city. You have 35 years of municipal experience. You've worked in Mississauga, Richmond Hill, Burlington. How did that prepare you for taking over this top job in Welland? It prepared me well. You know, having worked in, in Mississauga, going from a city of 250,000 now to almost 800,000, working in, in Richmond Hill, seeing that community grow to almost 160,000 in Burlington. So I've got significant experience of dealing with growth as well as intensification pressures. So it's the experience of, of working in that industry and understanding how all that works and connects and to prepare a city for, for the future. Steve, working in those cities, looking at the growth that those cities experience, that should prepare you well for the job here in Welland. The entire Niagara region has been thought of lately as the new Burlington with so many people from the GTA moving down here. The quality of life is impressive in Niagara region. It's strategically located and I see those opportunities continue, not just for Welland, but for the entire Niagara region. Steve, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on taking over the CAO job in the city of Welland. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of you in the future. Thank you, Mike. It was a pleasure. Look forward to meeting you in the future.